Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Happy Friday. This is the What We Said podcast. If you're new here, welcome. Stay a while. If you guys didn't know, which you should know by now, but we record our podcast on YouTube now so you can watch us talk, react. You can see our cutie little outfits every week on YouTube. So check it out. We're giving America today. America. Supporting the USA at the, for the Olympics. We're wearing red, white, and blue. We didn't plan it, but. No, we didn't. You know I what's mean, funny is we don't really plan to coordinate our outfits. My mother-in-law was asking me that. She's like, do you guys like call each other? And I'm like, not really. Honestly, we, we kind of just to. show up and see see what <laughs> what the vibes are. Sometimes one of yeah. us is looking like preppy and dressy and the other one's in like a sweat set. <laughs> I know sometimes if I'm going to go extreme one way or the other, I'll check with you. Yeah. Be like, okay, are we going comfy? Like, what are your vibes? And I don't need to match exactly, but I don't want to be like wearing a dress and like yeah. heels and then I'm in yeah. like a sweat set. Yeah. You'll never catch me in a dress on this podcast though. You'll never catch me in a dress period. Honestly, you'll never I'm catch me in person. shorts anymore because the way that this camera is angled, every time I wear shorts, I'm like, oh, you can see at my shorts every time. Really? Go back and watch. If you want a little show. I, please, I, do you know that I never wear dresses? Like, ever. <laughs> really? Ever, especially short dresses. That's okay, my least like, favorite thing on my body is like a short dress or like yeah. a short skirt. Really? Or like a, yeah, just. Yeah. Um. I it's I was thinking about that because I mean you know to certain events or something. I was gonna say I feel like I see you in dresses, but it's probably just because different events. But I would always rather be wearing pants. Like yeah, always. Which I'd love to get into my fashion crisis later. I would love to as well because I was just gonna say it's so interesting how everybody has a different silhouette that they prefer on Mm -hmm. them. Because my favorite thing on me is a dress is a short skirt. Oh my gosh, my nightmare. Big shirt, shorts. Like that is my And I'm that's opposite. My Roman I'm like Empire. baggy pants and short and like small shirt. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, well, welcome back, guys. Yeah. And I'm so happy to be back. I am back from my maternity leave. As you guys know, if you listen to this week's Tuesday episode, I shared my birth story and a little bit more about well, that was a long episode. Wow. I was just Yapville, USA. So we're, we're getting used to long episodes. Yeah. I like it. I can't stop talking. I personally can't stop either. So How did it's we nice. used to do like 50 minute episodes every week? Or like 30 minutes sometimes even, or 40. Yeah. Jail. So people are like, yeah, let's go back <laughs> to that actually. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we see you guys asking for us to stop the life updates. Some of you. Really? I don't see that. Mm, sometimes. Um, Reviews. Oh, they're like, get, get to the stories. Kind yeah, of thing. get to the stories. Yeah. Stop clickbaiting us. But I want you guys to know we hear you and we are purposefully ignoring you because some people do like it. So, you know, I'd we're say just talking I, and doing our thing. To be honest, I'd say a majority of people like it. Like when we talk. I think the format of our podcast at this point is like half of the time we're talking about Nothing. our current <laughs> thoughts and stupid things and just like life updates and what we've been up to and whatever. And then the other half is like, yeah. Stories and stuff. So I think that's the format. So if you're one of those people who don't like the life updates, this episode will be your worst nightmare. But also just maybe give it a chance. Like sit back, relax, get to know <laughs> us a little bit. Open up your mind <laughs> to just chatting, you know? Yeah. I love personally. Same. I think the reason that I like to I talk just said about, same. You didn't even say anything. I'm just like same, 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 same. Yep. 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 Exactly. Um, I personally love when people are like the podcast I listen to. That's my favorite part when they're Mm -hmm. talking about just like their weekend and their funny stories and their commentary. Um, So I guess I just think other people like that too, but you can't please everyone. So Mm -mm. anyway, this is just going to be a chatty catch up episode because we haven't been together in a while. I know. And yeah, I'm excited. Same. Well, what's been new? Well, last well, time we left us on start a- talking because I've literally talked for two hours last week. So, <laughs> oh, as you should. I've been talking for four episodes straight without you. So true, true. You know, um, I was thinking about. Oh, no, Ryan, I'm not going to get into that. But um, <laughs> I want to give my first update. That was the most recent thing that happened to me yesterday. I gave you a little bit of the behind the scenes. I got a massage yesterday. It was absolutely amazing. Shout out to the Now. They have like a couple locations in a different in different states, but it's very. You go in there and the rooms are just curtains 
Mm. But like you feel like you're going into I don't know. So it's not like your own separate the room desert. or it kind of is. Kind of is, but it's like um dressing room vibes almost. Okay. And the I, I'm trying to just like think of how to describe the room. It has like a fur blanket over the table. It's like giving desert vibes, like desert okay. cave vibes. Anyways, it's really relaxing. I did this like 80 minute massage shout out. Rachel and Danny, they got me like a certificate for my birthday and I haven't used it yet. So I just used it yesterday. Went, got nice. cupping done, got cupping done, gliding cups. So incredibly painful. I almost told her like, stop. Why did I choose this? Like I was trying to get a relaxing massage and it was so painful. They like suction up your skin and it's supposed to, um, not rejuvenate, but it's supposed to move around stagnant blood. So it helps you feel loose. Athletes always do it. If you see um, like basketball players, they always have like cupping marks on Mm -hmm. their back and stuff. It's really good for you. And I needed to loosen up my shoulders and stuff. So she did. It was incredibly painful. But um, afterwards, uh, it was only a little portion of the massage. I must have like postpartum sweat or like my hormones are crazy. Do you have that? Like you get really sweaty or hot, like almost like hot flashes. I was getting that more to, in the beginning of my recovery at night. I would literally be dripping sweat. Like, yeah. and I looked it up because I was like, is this okay? Like, I'm actually sweating so bad yeah. and my room is not, or, you know, it, I had the AC is on. So I'm like, why am I sweating so bad? And I was looking it up and girls would be like, I literally sleep with a towel under me, like postpartum. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. It was only, it only lasted for a little bit, but not during the day, really. Like, it would only be at night. I would get like night sweats. Yeah. I have, I just randomly, I'll just get really hot, mm. like out of nowhere. And it actually happens to me more now than it did at the beginning. Mm. I don't know if it's my hormones. Who knows what's going on in this body of mine. But I get so hot and I was under a sheet and then she put a hot, um, I don't like even know towel? what it was, but it was like a, a weighted hot thing on my back while she was like doing my feet. I was under this blanket, like completely covered head to toe. The table's heated. Did I you was ask like, her to take it I off? almost asked, but I was like, you know what? This is probably good. It's like a sauna. Like, just think about, you know, this is getting all the toxins. You're sweating. I was actually dripping with sweat. And then she like lifts up the covers and she's like, okay, um, scoot down. Cause I was on my stomach. She's like, scoot down. And I didn't really understand when they try and give you instructions, you're getting a massage. You're like, I'm not awake, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Leave she's me like, alone. <laughs> she's like, like, sorry. Scoot down so that you're off the headrest and flip over. And I did an opposite like wait I Order. flipped over so she's holding up so I flipped over she's just seeing my whole <laughs> just naked body I flip over and then I scoot down but I could barely move because I I was so like sticky with sweat that I'm trying to scoot and I literally having to like inch my way I'm dripping with sweat. and I asked I try to like move my arm to like flip <laughs> over bean dipped her <laughs> literally goes like it got like stuck you know how they're like <laughs> it got stuck and I literally go like this <laughs> just, I go sorry and I'm just like I'm like here she just saw my boob I just flicked her boob I'm like okay well <laughs> we're closer than ever I'm like I'm literally dripping with sweat too so I can't even think properly and I'm half asleep so then she like puts the blankets over me I'm like well at this point we're just close and oh and my I was like <laughs> just felt like a teenage like boy or something I'm so sweaty I'm like bean dipping her I'm like oh is that what it's called I think okay. so I was trying to think of another name oh, for it but my gosh yeah basically just flicked her boob that is killing me yeah wow but it was a great massage shout out massages are like a breeding ground for embarrassing moments yeah wait did I ever um what did I oh I when snored. she was going super hard oh really? no, no, no it was the last massage I got before I gave birth, yeah, which I don't know if I was I talked about it on the podcast. I actually think I, I feel like I said it somewhere, but um, I fell asleep and literally snored. Like <laughs> I woke myself up by being like, <sighs> and I was like, hmm, that was so like obviously I'm I'm They're probably huge. used to it, yeah. I'm just so pregnant, yeah, laying there, and I'm like, I didn't even I didn't address it or acknowledge it. I was like. <laughs> goodbye I just snorted <laughs> I so loud and woke myself up but that just shows how relaxed I was yeah that that's how they they probably have so I was thinking about it after I'm like she just didn't even react yeah she probably has so many awkward situations like that I feel like 
those things, you feel like you're the only person who ever does like, something like that. Yeah. I'll even just think about, you know, I, I will have like not shaved my legs in not even that long, like a week or something. And I'll, <laughs> I like go to get a pedicure and I'm like, oh, I should have like shaved right before I came. Yeah. And then I'm like, they have seen so much worse. Men go into there. Yes. Go like, into those um, salons. A little bit of hair on the legs. They're fine. Like yeah. same with anything giving birth. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're just like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I always think like, oh, I, I want it to be, I want them to be as comfortable as possible. I'm like, they don't care. They've yeah. seen the worst of the worst. Yeah. Anyway. When, when I was in the hospital giving birth or in labor and she would come to the Doppler, like at first, this nurse is about to see everything. Yeah. But I'm like covering up my boobs. Like when she's like, I'm lifting up my yeah. stomach, but making sure she can't see my nipples. I'm like, You're, she's you about were, to literally see I the know. inside of me. Like <laughs> it, She doesn't care to see my nipple. I promise. You were so right when you were like, I remember you telling me just that everything goes out the window. Like when you are giving birth, you're yeah. just like, I don't care. Like if you see, whatever you're yeah. just like spread eagle you're like I don't care <laughs> and it really was true I felt the same way like when I first got there I'd be like oh like kind of you know timid and then yeah. by the end I'm like literally my whole thing's down I'm just like <laughs> laying there my whole down the t- I'm topless I'm like whatever yeah no Who they cares? don't care they're used to it yeah they see it all that's their job quite yeah. literally they probably don't even yeah think twice that is hilarious I'm actually surprised that you didn't um have like a laughing fit you do you know that like when you were in the massage. Oh, I was like during, <laughs> like during while you're giving yeah. birth. No, I no. feel like weirdly, I don't know if it's like the pressure points on my back. Sometimes I actually get the urge to laugh a lot during massages. Like, really? like all, or I think I'll think of funny things, like something funny that happened. And I know I can't laugh. And I'm like, I'm about to crack up like yeah. while they're massaging me. And it's the worst time to do it. That's why it's like, it's probably, yeah. So I'm surprised you didn't literally flick her boob and then just start like cracking up by the way it was with my elbow it wasn't my hand so it wasn't as like much essay because I wasn't like it wasn't as much essay as crazy (laughs) it was my elbow because I was pulling it out of the blanket so like my elbow did it that would probably hurt it it was very light (laughs) okay okay Uh, it was like oh gosh yeah I'm surprised it didn't either but I was so uncomfortable in that moment because I was so hot and I was ready to like I was finally having some airflow yeah. under the blanket and they put the um she put the sheet on the hot weighted thing I don't even know what it was and then she put the fur blanket over me yeah and the sometimes table's it gets heated. really warm I was like is this okay no, like it's not comfy am I overly sweaty or is this supposed to be happening like is it supposed to be like a sauna and you're sweating out. No, I'm sure it's the horn. I'm she sure was trying to hormone. take the sheet off my legs. Like, massage me. like they're like stuck to my legs. Jeez. It was so bad. But anyways. Well, I'm glad it was relaxing. It was. It was nice. Chelsea just showed me the photos of the cupping marks on her back. And they're absolutely so massive. bad. Or like so dark. So dark. She's like, you do have some marks. I'm like, yeah, I've been cut before. I got home. I was getting in the shower. I was like, oh my gosh, purple, huge purple circles on my back. How long do they last? Like a few days or a week or something? I think like a week or two. Yeah. Felt amazing though. Well, that's good. Yeah. That sounds really nice. I want to get a massage soon. Yeah, you should. I was reignited. I reignited my love for getting massages like towards the end of my pregnancy. I was like, wow, there's really nothing like just laying down and getting a massage. I know. Also, I laid on my stomach for the first time. Not like, I've kind of been, li- I don't know. I am a stomach. I have always been a stomach sleeper, but I've trained myself to be a side sleeper even before I was pregnant because I was having like neck issues. Mm-hmm. And the chiropractor was, or whoever, I can't even remember who I was saying. They were like, do you sleep on your stomach? Because that's like the worst thing you can do for your neck. Because it really is. Yeah. It's like you're on your stomach and your oh, neck so is bad. Cr- like cranked like this. So comfy. All night. But um, last night, I laid on my stomach. Not, I didn't sleep like that all night, but like I had a moment where I was just kind of like tossing and turning and I just laid on my stomach and I was like, oh, I know. oh, I miss this so much. It's so comfy. It's so comfy. It really, really hit the spot. I usually start on my stomach, like when I get into bed and then right before I fall asleep, I get on my side. Oh. Just because it's so comfy. It's so comfy. There's something It's so about protected. It. I don't know. It yeah. just feels so secure. It really does. We're going to jump into an ad to talk about Rocket Money. I love Rocket Money so much. You guys need to listen up. And if you haven't tried Rocket Money yet, you need to. It has helped me so much. So how much do you think that you're paying in subscriptions every month? The answer is probably more than you think. Over 74% of people have subscriptions that they've forgotten about. I definitely did. I've talked about this before. When I signed up from Rocket Money, I think a couple years ago, two or more years ago, 
I realized I was paying for some subscriptions twice, which was absolutely r- ridiculous. I also forgot about some of the subscriptions I'd signed up for with, you know, under a free trial that I needed in a pinch. And it saved me so much money. Thanks to Rocket Money, I'm no longer wasting money on the ones that I forgot about. So Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. So I can see all of my subscriptions in one place and I can see if something that um, comes up that I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few taps. So the dashboard's really nice because it shows me this month's spending compared to last month's. You can really clearly see your spending habits, which is, uh, you know, good to face head on. Um, plus, you can they can help you create a custom budget and keep your spending on track. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash what we said. That's rocketmoney.com slash what we said. Again, that is rocketmoney.com slash what we said. Um, What's your updates? We want to hear about the house. Let's get to it. Okay. The house is, I know I keep saying it's so close. It's so close. It really is. It's like truly just like the tiniest of details left. Um, Everything, like all the floors are done, which is awesome. All the paint is done on the walls. Wow. They were doing some touch-ups recently and like some stuff on the ceiling. Um, Our contractor, I've said that he's been awesome. He's been super reliable. He's been pretty much like right on target with the time frame he's given us, which is I think kind of rare. I Just from other people's experiences that I've heard, they're like, oh yeah, they'll tell you it'll be done this day, but like it never is. And I feel like he's been pretty just spot on with like everything he's told us. And a lot of the, any of like delays that we've had have been delays of, you know, products getting shipped to us. So like, you know, a certain flooring being delayed or something so they can't put it in until they have it. But if they had it, they would already be doing it. So stuff like that has caused us some delays, but like it really was never their fault. Like they have been so on top of it, just like working and, um. Yeah, he texted us yesterday and was like, I'm trying my best to finish it as soon as possible for you guys. And he really has just been so awesome. So that has been, we've had a great experience with like all the people working on our house, which has been awesome. But there has been like little hiccups and miscommunications of certain things like, oh, the size of this, it's too big, whatever, things like that. Um, So, and that's always going to happen. Like, that's what I've realized. It's just, you're always going to have miscommunications about measurements of certain things or whatever the case may be. It's honestly shocking you can even build the house in the first place because all of those measurements seem so complicated and so exact. They need to yeah. be so exact. I know. It's it's wild how many, I mean, I, I know I keep harping on this, but just like how many tiny details there are. And it's just, it's so much energy. So I think my postpartum has been, um, I've been putting still so much energy into the house because it's like, it's literally down to the wire and I don't want to, uh, I don't know, not like give up control, but just be like, eh, I don't care about those details. Cause like, these are the final details mm-hmm. that people, you know, that I'm going to live with. For example, we're doing like a shelf above our, um, bathtub or like we're doing this arch and the bottom is a shelf so that we can like put products or like things on the shelf. And he's like, Oh, how deep do you want it? Like how big? Cause we're going to cut the marble slab for the shelf. And I'm like, I don't know, yeah. you know? So I'm looking, I'm like four inches or five, I, I don't know. But then it's like, I'm thinking, I, I have to live with this. So yeah. how deep do how I want How deep it? do I want it? So I need to like measure a product that I would put on it and be mm-hmm. like, okay, well, I want that to comfortably sit on it. You know, it's like, it's just yeah. constant. But, and that is the tiniest of detail. And he was just like, they're painting the French doors for my like little den area. And they're like, do you want the door jams painted as well or just the door? And I'm like, I don't know. Just, you know what I mean? It's just little things that yeah. keep coming up. And I'm like, it's just, yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, Jeez. everyone, I had a friend who just renovated her whole house and she's like, literally we moved in and we're like, should we just sell it? Like it, it, this was so much work. And like, there were so many things that didn't even, weren't even work what out. I wanted. And it's oh just, gosh. it's a lot of work. Yeah. I, I know what everyone's talking about, how yeah. they just say, but it is so fun to see it come together. Oh my gosh. I love your kitchen. I need to come over. I, your bathroom, I don't think you ever like 
told me about I'm like you never told me about your bathroom <laughs> no. but I don't think you showed me like the marble or like mm. your vision for the bathroom I feel like I've seen like things from all of all of the other rooms yeah I want that bathroom it is so it's a beautiful like the marble because you showed me your tub uh-huh. and at first I was like but with nothing remember you showed me just like the bare bones like of your tub. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, okay, that's an interesting shape. Like, I didn't really like, get what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when I saw in the marble, I was like, oh my gosh, it makes sense. Like, it looks so good. It is. I need to take a bath in there immediately. I know. <laughs> I'm like, we'll be bathing together. <laughs> it is better than I could have imagined. Yeah. Truly, I was. That is probably terrified. Like, my favorite room so far that I've seen. Same. Like with the skylight above the bath. Oh my gosh. Leif was saying that's his favorite room too. Um. It is so beautiful and I was so terrified. I was just talking about this on my vlog. I, so I got, we, we bought two marble slabs of that marble, Mm -hmm. but it's very, they're all, you know, super. it's a literal natural stone. So that every piece of it is different. And like every part of the literal huge slab is like different coloring and stuff like that. And there's this one specific spot that I was like, this spot is like so gorgeous because it has all the colors that I love. It has like this pinkish tone. It has cream. It has this green. It has almost this like burnt orange. It's like very earthy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I picked that specific slab for that specific spot because it was so amazing. And uh, I was like, that's what I want to be like the forefront of the bath. So we had, you know, picked that marble out months ago. And I kind of had forgotten about again, these are like all these tiny details and they were fabricating the stone, measuring things for the bath. And, um, they've been like working fast and basically they called and they're like, okay, we, we installed it. Like we fabricated this, the thing and we, uh, the, the piece of marble and it's on the bathtub. And I was like, I didn't tell them the spot. Oh no! I had this moment of absolutely kind of pit in my stomach. Cause yeah. that was one of the things that we splurged on the most yeah. was that marble. And as you should, it's gorgeous. And I was just like, I can't believe I didn't. I was like, I don't think I told them life the spot. And, you know, it's all beautiful. So I knew it's like, it's still going to be pretty, but it, it was like, that was the mm-hmm. money spot. That's why I bought that piece. Like it's probably going to be, you know, used somewhere, but I wanted it to be like the main thing. And I just was so, oh my gosh, I was terrified to like walk in there. I walk in the exact thing, the exact spot that yeah. I wanted. And I was like, wait, I had to have told them, right? Yeah. Or maybe I just got so lucky and they saw it too. They were like, oh, this is the most mm-hmm. pretty spot or something. I can't remember because I was so pregnant and I was like, yeah. I'm like, maybe I just told them, but I forgot that I did. I don't know. Or I just got so lucky and the universe blessed me. But literally, it's the perfect spot. On it there. is so pretty. It's so pretty. I'm so happy with it. I feel like, yeah, to just see it all come to life, obviously, I'm not a designer. I don't necessarily know what I'm doing. My mom has been a massive help. Like she actually has more experience renovating and like picking finishes that go with each other. But like I've said at the end of the day, like I've been the one, my mom doesn't live in California and I've been the one in person. Hoping it all works out. Picking it out. Yeah. Yeah. And just being like, okay, hopefully this works out. And, you know, I like went to that marble slab, not knowing what I wanted our countertop to be. And just like seeing that countertop mm-hmm. or that marble that's, that we use, that's like greenish blue and being like, wait, I'm so drawn to that. I want that. Yeah. But then I'm like, but I want terracotta floors. Okay. Is that going to work? I don't know. I've just been trying to like put everything together and I, it has been so cool to like, I don't know. Basically what I'm trying to say is this has been an exercise in like trusting myself <laughs> yeah. and everything has turned out exactly how I wanted it to Mm -hmm. truly like everything that gets um installed I'm like okay I kind of ate with that like it just looks so good together I'm like oh my gosh I love it Mm -hmm. like I'm just so happy with it so that's good that's all you can ask for yeah I really have been terrified because I feel like it is easier to just do all neutral stuff Mm -hmm. like truly it is that's why I you know, like works. a lot of people yeah. do that when they flip home or like even people who buy and flip homes, it's much easier to just be like, okay, wood floors, white, everything. Cause it lo- does look pretty and it's like, it's going to look bright and airy and you're not really taking any risks. Like it's going to look beautiful. Yeah. So I think like a lot of my choices have felt risky. Like I'm just like, hope this looks pretty. Yeah. I don't know if it will go together. And I'm happy to say that they've all like just been what I, what I envisioned. So yeah. Yeah, 
I'm we're going to be nice. moving really, really soon. Like actually really soon. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Probably in the next few weeks. Immediately. Yeah. You need to just wait like, well, I bet all the floors will be uncovered really soon, but I feel like that makes it so you can't really understand. Yeah. Like once the floors are uncovered, it will look so much yeah. more like finished, obviously. Yeah. Cause it's just covered with paper right now as they were like finishing up, touching up paint and there was like dust and stuff everywhere. So once that's uncovered, oh, it'll look really pretty. Oh my gosh. It's so crazy. I'm that excited. it's like so soon. So soon. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's the house update. It's been like a year almost. Yeah. That we've been working on it. It took so long to get permits and the whole process is just, yeah, every, all the like stuff just takes so long, like cabinets. It'd be like, okay, delivered in 12 weeks. Like everything just takes so long. So oh it's gosh. been a, a whole process, but anyone who has been living the, the renovation life, you know, you know, the, you know, the vibes. Mm-hmm. And when you, well, if you want to renovate a house, yeah. maybe I'll just buy one that's already done. But if, if you, um, and Nick renovate, I will have lots of, um, tips, tips and tricks. For no, you. I'm glad I've learned so much. Like Leif and I are like, you will be my contractor. House, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and I will be your GC. <laughs> um, yeah, we've just been talking about how, if we do this again in the future, like we have learned so much and just like little things that we need to keep in mind and the order to do things or whatever it yeah. will be. Yeah. We've learned a ton. It's, it's, it's a very, um, it makes you feel like an adult. It's like, yeah. wow, this is a very adult experience. Just <laughs> I'm sure both of us always being on the phone with the contractor, like, mm-hmm. okay, head over to the house, do this, measure this invoice. Da, da, da. And I'm just like, wow, I think I'm actually <laughs> not 18 anymore. No, I know. I, um, you know, the house that I'm going to buy. Yeah, true. I'll true. be re redoing. That you will be sure. renovating. Not all sure. of it, but probably some of it. So I'll be needing you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be there with my hard hat on. <laughs> yeah. I have a vest. I'm like directing everyone. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's so much work, but it's so awesome to be able to customize things. Like yeah. the, the other thing is, um, in our shower, I was like, okay, I want to do a shower niche with like three shell or I guess two shelves and a bottom, but three, like little niches, mm-hmm. whatever. And I want the bottom one to be like small so that I can just fit like smaller, like a dry brush razor, you know? Cause sometimes yeah. that takes up space like yeah. with all your other products, but things like that, it's been so nice. Cause I'm like, I can just do what, like I can just have it be exactly what I need, what I want and need. Like the things that I just wish that all the houses I've had that I've lived in would have had. Yeah. Like, so it's so nice to be able to customize it. And I do feel like um, every person has different things that they want in a house where it's like, okay, this is my non-negotiable. If mm-hmm. I were to make a house, like I, this would be my number one priority where some people, you know, care about lighting. Some people right. care about like their, their bathrooms. Like, okay, I need a good shower. I need a good bath. Some people yeah. don't care about bathrooms. Some people are like, right. I just shower in there. It's fine. I don't need it. I care about bathrooms. I'm mm-hmm. like, I need a nice, relaxing, mm-hmm. serene bathroom. Almost more than my actual bedroom. I care about it. Yeah. But yeah, it's crazy. I know. It's been really nice. And and we have made mistakes, like things that were just like, okay, we wouldn't have done it like that. Or we wish we would have thought of that before. Whatever. We've, we've had certain things like that. But for the most part, I feel like we've been very like particular about every single thing. Like anything that they've done. And I've been like, Ooh, like I feel like they need, you know, they installed lights and I'm like, I feel like that needs to be lower. Like I haven't shied away from being like, can you please move those lower? Like, cause I'm yeah. just like, this is going to be our house that we live in. Like, I don't yeah. want things to be, obviously I'm paying them to do it, but it's like, I don't want it to be not what I want. Yeah, like, exactly. You just have to speak up and be like, can you change the size of this? Can you, whatever. There's so many different things, but we also did a speaker system throughout the house. So we have like speakers on the ceiling. Um, Benny will love that as she gets older. And it's so fun. Like, well, it's just for like playing music and stuff. No, I know. Oh, okay. That's what yeah. I mean. Like, Case loves when the house is like filled with music. Yeah. Yeah. It'll like, I feel fun. like little kids love that. Like, True. speakers. I mean, so do adults. I obviously yeah, yeah. love it too. But yeah. like, when they are toddlers, they love music. True. I thought you thought maybe it was like an intercom system or something. Where, oh, no. I don't think that. Anyway. Leif kind of planned it all and planned mm-hmm. where they would go. He's the, he's the one that's yeah. into the sound. He's the like, tech. Yeah, the tech stuff. But um, I've been thinking about that. I'm like, wait, that's going to be so fun. Like when we're, whatever, making food, we can just be like playing music and mm-hmm. we'll kind of be playing throughout the house. Like there have just been fun choices that we've made that I'm like, this is going to be so fun. And such a vibe. I like put up my phone for two seconds to like see the lighting because I've never really seen like, 
everything being done and uh like I've never filmed in there you know what I mean mm -hmm. and obviously that's a huge part of my life like filming anything TikToks uh my vlogs stuff like that and I just like set up my phone quickly to like see the vibes and I was so I'm just like this is aligning with what I've always needed wanted. and yeah. needed like you know what I mean? I've always said like everywhere we've lived has been beautiful. I'm so grateful for like every house that we've rented, but there've always been things that I wish were different about them. And it's like now when I'm filming, I'm like this aligns with what I yeah. have always envisioned like a space that I feel so comfy and like obsessed with. Like this is it. Like mm -hmm. we created it. It's so fun. Oh my gosh. So I can't wait. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, you should come over in like one week. Yeah. And then it will be perfect really good yeah I'm so so excited it'll be so fun I literally was going through that consignment shop and I was looking for myself obviously but I kept seeing things I'm like oh my gosh to have a blank slate of a house and like put new things in is so fun like I literally just basically finished redecorating my house and you just never I'm just like oh my gosh I want something new to like decorate so I was like looking for not for you to put things in but I was like oh my gosh that would be so cute with like her colors and her house like random things so fun I know now I have to furnish the whole thing I'm yeah. like oh we've got lots more work <laughs> yeah. to do like which is gonna be so fun it'll too. be so probably be when so you're fun. done you're probably gonna be like wait no <laughs> I feel like it's gonna be so long until I'm done true because true. seriously I've been so focused on these the detail the bigger details of just like the flooring the walls the like lighting fixtures you still all got that. the yards oh yeah like we haven't even touched the landscaping and that is gonna be a you massive, haven't but your neighbors have yeah, don't worry. Someone has. Um, but it's going to be, yes, that's going to be a huge part of our house mm -hmm. is the landscaping. And like, yeah. we're so excited for that too. So, um, but we really just want to move in. So we're trying to get everything done for that. But yeah, I've been thinking about how I'm like, oh wait, now we need like all new, not all new furniture, <laughs> but we did get rid of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like for our guest room, we don't have a bed or anything. Like, yeah, I just... Well, we never had an extra bed, but um, well, and we got sometimes rid of a lot of stuff. When you move, it's it's not even that you don't want to use your furniture. Your furniture might not fit in the places like beds might not fit in the same way. Yeah. Couches might not fit. And it's just, I felt like this is a whole new chapter and it's just a new vibe. There's yeah. a few key pieces that I'm like in love with that I just, like my TV stand is, I love so mm -hmm. much and my couch I love. And yeah, there are just certain things that I'm like, I don't want to get rid of this. Like I love yeah. it, but certain like rugs, I was just like, eh, new, new space, new yeah. chapter. I don't want to reuse that rug. Like we've had that for years and I want new vibes. So fresh. We need a lot of, yeah. Like as I was actually thinking about it, I'm like, oh wow, we need a lot of different furniture and stuff, yeah. but that'll have to come with time. Yeah. True. So nice. Anyway, can't wait to have you guys over a little housewarming. I know. Party. It'll be soon. What else have you been up to postpartum? Well, I got been? so lucky with Love Island USA. So true. Being on during like the most iconic season literally ever being on so good. during my maternity leave. And it's every night, which yeah. was just so fun because it was like something to live for. Seriously, especially during all my my trials and tribulation. Um, so that was really fun. And then the Olympics have been on too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not my maternity leave anymore, but like. Just having – that's great TV. All of yes. that is, like, great, great TV. Yeah. So, and lots of TV, mm -hmm. too. I have been laying so low. I have really taken your advice of just, like, not doing much. I just started, like, walk going on, like, small walks. Yeah. That's um, good. And I really do feel so much better every day. I feel like it's starting to feel more normal and, like, I'm starting to feel more healed. I still don't feel ready to, like, fully get back into exercising. But yeah. I think that I'm getting there, like – even just going on walks, it used to feel very, um, I went on a few walks when we had family in town, seriously, for 10 minutes, like nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. And even by the end of the walk, I'm like, I'm feeling like there's such a heaviness like down there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to even explain it, but I'm like, I'm so sore. I don't know. But every day I'm feeling like, okay, that's kind of, Healed. I just, yes, I'm feeling more normal when I like walk around and I'm not like, I used to just not even want to get up and walk around. I'm like, even around my house. Yeah. No. I'm just like, I don't even want to go up and like get something from the fridge. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm just like feeling totally okay doing that because I'm feeling more healed. So yeah, um, I have just, everything's been kind of uphill ever since my infection and then 
getting out of the out of the hospital that time. Yeah. It really has been uphill. Well, I guess ever since the IVs were done, I was like, okay, new chapter. We're <laughs> healing. Like I am just, I think the contrast of how horrible I felt during that infection and a little bit like postpartum coming off the magnesium, all that, like the contrast of that versus now, I'm like, I am so, I feel so much better yeah. that it's almost like I'm extra, like I want to do stuff. Cause mm -hmm. I'm just like, I literally felt so just bad Yeah, that the contrast is so stark. A new lust for life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was saying on YouTube that I kind of feel this just in general, this like newfound motivation in life. And I don't even really know how to express it, but I was asking Leif, I'm like, do you feel like more motivated than you used to? And he's like, yeah, I think so. I, he's like, I guess life just feels like it has more substance. And I was just thinking about the fact that it's like, I feel more productive, which is so weird Yeah, because I'm like, you would think I would feel like I'm drowning in like all these responsibilities, but it's like, it just forces me. I, I think I'm loving having a switch up of my routine and feeling a little bit of a challenge. I yeah. literally have not had anything really challenge me in like years. I mean, I've had, yes, I've had like hard things in my life, but as far as like something to like completely just like- That you have to do. That I have to do that like switches yeah. up my routine and gets me out of my comfort zone. Like I haven't had that in a very long time. Um, and I think IVF was kind of my first experience with that where it's like, okay, I'm very committed to this like, new random routine. And I think I had said then too, I'm like, I feel very, it feels very rewarding, even though it's really hard. I feel like that same way where it just feels like, okay, Leif and I have had kind of the same life for like eight years. Like we've been married for a long time. You know, we switch it up here and there, but it's all on our own terms. And it's like, I don't know. We've just mm -hmm. been kind of coasting along comfortable for years and years as far as just our life and our routine goes. And this really is like, you know, it flips you upside down where it's like, okay, this is your new life. Like mm -hmm. you have to do this and you still have to work and you still have to renovate your house. And like, you have to work more now yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, figure it out. And personally, I love that. Like, yeah. I, I think that I do really well with that actually. Like weirdly, that's where I thrive is like, kind of, not chaos, but kind of like Pressure almost. Pressure yeah. and like a little bit of challenge. I really have always been like that. And so I think that that's kind of hard to uh, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Facilitate for yourself. You kind of need something to come in and do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of hard to facilitate a huge change just on your own. Yeah, like, you know, it's sure. like two years ago, if I was like, I need someone to switch it up. It's like, well, I have to now. I'm like, going to start getting up at 6.30 yeah. a.m. Yeah, it's like, it's like a, yeah, I have to yeah. create that. But yeah. like now it's just like, you have to get up and feed mm -hmm. her. You have to do this. And I, yeah, it's been truly, it's been really good. It doesn't mean it's been easy. Like, I feel yeah. like I am sleep deprived. And even like this morning, I told Leif, I'm like, oh, wow, I am so tired. And like, I need you to, uh, like take over for a few hours while I sleep so that I can podcast and I had I have other stuff I need to do today. Yeah. So it's like I'm not just saying it's like a breeze, but more yeah. responsibility is it rejuvenating. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like you were saying, it's like so refreshing to not think about yourself 24/7. Yeah. I, I feel like having something else to worry about and take care of like kind of takes your brain off of you and mm -hmm. I've even found myself like I don't know, even just with, well, we can talk about the fashion, that <laughs> postpartum fashion, but even that, I just kind of care less. I don't want to say I care less about myself. Like I definitely am so excited to be in my wellness era and like reprioritize myself, but it has a different feeling to it. Yeah. It's not as like, I need to look good. I'm just like, okay, I want to feel good. And, but I don't really, I don't know. I don't care as much as I thought I would like about yeah. even just my body or like, I, I feel kind of like, I'm just so busy thinking about her yeah. and taking care of her and trying to work and do all this stuff that I'm like, you just don't have as much time for it. Yeah. I don't yeah. have as much time to like sit around and be like wallowing in anything. Yeah. It's like, okay, just get up and get done. Like you just had a baby. Your body's going to be different. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It feels, I feel less like self-centered, I guess. Yeah. Cause I have to be. Yeah. And it's very freeing. 
Like it's so nice. I really like it. I'm yeah. like, this is really nice to not be so in my head. Yeah. You have no time to I be know. in your head. It's, I think I was saying this on an episode a while ago that um, Nick and I were saying we are so much more clean. Like our house yeah. is more organized and actually more tidy now that we have two kids than it was when we were both childless. <laughs> like, yeah. Because you just, you, you're doing more. So you're like, well, I'm already up. Like I might yeah. as well just finish cleaning. Like I might as well keep going when, yeah, you're just still so comfortable and you're just like chilling. Like we will always be like, literally, what did we do? <laughs> like we, we didn't have kids for like five years. Yeah. Like, what did we do with our time? Why didn't we accomplish more? I know, we had like, so much more time. Well, and also when your baby's like asleep or mm -hmm. whatever, I feel like for me, it's like, well, I actually saw this video that was cracking me up because I have had this experience too. It's like when the baby's asleep, but like you've scrolled for too long and now they're like waking up yeah. and you're like, no. <laughs> and I definitely yeah. have my moments of just like, okay, I want to like just relax for a second, sleep or scroll, scroll or something. Yeah. But at the same time, like when she's asleep, I'm like, okay, yeah. like, I need to, you know, edit. Yeah. I need to put this together because it's like, this has to be done today. And I yeah. don't want to do it when she's awake. So like you have no choice, but to, I feel like be more productive. Like yeah. when you can be, it's like, okay, yeah, let's clean. Let's whatever, because she's chilling right now. Yeah. And I don't want to wait until she's awake and needs my attention. Like, yeah. yeah, I saw this TikTok. It was like when the baby's down for a nap and you have to, you know, that meme where yeah, she, yeah, yeah. the lady's like doesn't know where to go. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if I should vacuum, do my taxes, like all the millions of things you have to do in the two hour span. Seriously. And then you start one and then they wake up from their nap in like 10 yeah. seconds. Oh, I know. Oh, what is going through his four month sleep regression? Oh, no. I've heard it's of that. not. Both times I've been like, that won't happen to me. Like my and baby's different. Yeah, yeah. And every time the four months, like literally on the dot. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh my gosh. He, just, he was, you guys, like I knocked on wood, but it didn't work. He was such a good sleeper. Mm -hmm. He would sleep through the night. He would nap so well. And I knew in the back of my mind, I'm like, this is not going to last forever. And then yeah. I got too greedy. I got too comfortable. Like I would put him down. And usually I'll go to sleep right when he goes to sleep because I want that long mm -hmm. stretch and he's not good with like dream feeding, you know, when you like mm -hmm. to get that longer stretch. But <clears throat> so I would like go to bed early. Then he started sleeping so long. I was like, I'm just going to stay up like an hour. Like chill. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go to sleep something. later. I'll still get like five or six hours, whatever. And then I started doing that. And then I woke up. He'd start waking up like an hour. I'd have to go to bed after I would go to bed. And I'd be like, okay. And then he just didn't stop doing that. I thought it was like a fluke. And then yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening. And it lasts for like a couple of weeks. And I'm just like, oh no. He won't like nap as well. They um, they just like wake up. They're, it's because their um, sleep patterns change. Like they start to, instead of just like when they wake up from a cycle, just going right back to sleep, they will like fully mm -hmm. rouse like right when mm -hmm. they wake up from a cycle. So they wake up every like two hours like a newborn Goodbye. <laughs> and they, um, they like take cat naps instead of like long stretches and he can't be swaddled anymore. I'm oh. just like, Oh wow. Wow. I forgot. This is like, I'm just so tired. Sleep deprivation is really, it it's is really good. hard. Yeah. Like it is hard to function. I truly. will put like, I'll wake up, put him back to like when he wakes up, I'll like wake up with him, either nurse him or give him his binky, whatever the vibes are. And then he goes back to sleep. I literally feel like I blink and then I look at the clock. It's been three hours or two hours and he's awake again. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't even, I'm like, oh, he, I just put him down. Oh, look, it's been two hours. I'm like, wait, how? I know. I'm so tired. Oh, that is very relatable. <laughs> yeah. It is crazy. Leif's brother was in town this um, past weekend and I was telling him about how like in the beginning you have to feed them like every two hours. Yeah. And he's like, you're joking. <laughs> I'm like, no, no. And it is those first few weeks I feel like are kind of the trenches like people would anytime would be like oh yeah like she's three weeks old to be like oh you're in the trenches and I'm like okay yeah that was the trenches like yeah. I feel like the very beginning and what you're describing it's like when it is so often mm -hmm. it's like oh wow I'm exhausted yeah. and I'm it's not like I think it's um I saw something about the sundown scaries and I'm like that is so yeah. real I don't feel as much like that now yeah. already which is awesome because it would like be approaching sundown like approaching nighttime yeah, and late night would both just be like <laughs> like we know what's happening yeah. we know what's in store we know we're not getting a good night's sleep yeah. like yeah. we know we're waking up every few hours and feeding her changing her like doing the whole thing and it's like wow yeah this is a lot I know but yeah um those are kind of my 
My postpartum my thoughts and my updates. Yeah. It, I mean, there really wasn't much to update on because I was sitting on my couch, rocking chair, or laying in bed for like weeks. Yeah. And Love that. In the hospital. But when you were talking about, you know, healing and stuff like that, I do feel like your body, especially postpartum, is really good at telling you when you're doing too much. Mm-hmm. Like it will show you. It will, yes. You'll either start bleeding again it'll be or very clear it'll to be you. super like heavy, like you were saying, or super. Um, just uncomfortable your body's literally like screaming at you to sit down like yep. you just need to relax yeah so I, that's kind of nice because you're not guessing danny was like oh was it hard for you to not be like working not be working or was it nice to take a break and i was like it was not hard for me to not work because i couldn't even think about like yeah there would have been no way for me to even work i just felt like i truly was in survival mode for those yeah. weeks like there was no, yeah, it was not hard to take a break. Like it was, you know, because I've always been like, oh, I like to work. And I'm like, no, it was not. It was not a challenge for me to stop working. You were working. I <laughs> needed to yeah, literally lay down and like not do, not do anything. Yeah. Um, I do also have to give a huge shout out to Jilly. She was, she saved my life, especially coming during my infection. I don't think I mentioned that during my birth story. Well, I mentioned that she came, but I kind of glazed over it. Yeah. And I, as I was thinking more about it, I'm like, I need to, I need to double down on the fact that like, it just was so nice and comforting to have my mom there. Yeah. Especially um, when I was in the hospital and Leif was alone with Benny. Like it just was such nice reassurance that my mom was yeah. there and helping Leif like I just felt obviously I know he's more than capable of like handling it but I think just like even the comfort of someone else being there like it's so isolating him just at home alone with a newborn me at in the hospital alone you know mm-hmm. it's just like it was nice to have to know that she was there to like I don't know just help make some meals and like hold Benny in so that Leif mm-hmm. could whatever shower and feed her and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. It was so nice. And she also was there for the birth and helped me postpartum. And I now uh, looking at the whole situation, I feel like one of the most helpful things people can do is like provide food. Yeah. Like it is so, you're just so nice. I feel like you're just, um, I don't know, trying to figure out this new life. And it's like just the mental energy being like, oh, let's grocery shop and like, plan meals it's like that's just not Mm -mm. I don't know for me at least I felt like that was not even on my mind I couldn't even do that no and you want like I didn't want to be eating out either it's like I want like really hearty meals and there's just something about postpartum too that you just want your mom (laughs) you want your mommy like I want as soon as I know I'm like about to have a baby I'm like my mom I need to pay my mom to literally stay here for three months like to stay with me to make me food to uh, tickle my back, to yeah. bring me water because you, there, no one takes care of you like your mom. No. When I'm really sick too, like I had the flu a couple weeks ago and I was like having night sweats, like really felt absolutely horrible. And I was like telling Nick, I'm like, you're great, but I want my mom. No, literally. <laughs> I know. It, you know how I'm always just so like, I'm like, I don't care about my family. <laughs> no, not at all. Like people, independent. Yes, yeah. very independent. People always ask like, oh, do you miss your family? And I'm like, no, I see them all the time. Like they come out to visit. I don't care that I live in a different state than them. Like, I, again, because I see them often. Like they, my mom works for the airlines. She flies out all the time. So I just, I guess if, you know, I was going long stints of not seeing them, I would miss them more. But I, I just feel like we see each other so frequently that like it doesn't really affect my life. And now, like even just after having Benny, I'm like, move here immediately. Yeah. Like, to my parents and my brother is even like yeah. everyone I love. I'm like, no, you need to live next to me. Like yeah. it is so nice to have them. And yeah, I don't know. I, I've and, literally never felt like that. And I yeah. remember you kind of saying like, once you have kids, it's like, you kind of, I'm like, oh yeah, maybe. And uh, whatever. But it's yeah. just so nice to have family nearby. It really is. Like, I understand why people would like live somewhere else and be like, oh, I want to move home once I have kids. Cause, cause you have family around you. Like, yeah. It truly is just really game changing. It's nice. And it's also your parents will watch, like want to watch your kids. Yeah. Versus like you have to hire a babysitter. Like yeah. some, like your family there will, you know, also you trust them more than other people. Mm-hmm. Usually it is really nice. Yeah. But, it was, it's been so nice having them here for like any time that they come. And I'm just like, my mom's always like, I don't want to leave. And I'm like, me neither. Yeah. Stay <laughs> yeah. forever. Like 
I know. It's been hard with this little spot we have because we don't have like an extra room or anything. But mm-hmm. I've also been so excited for our house for that reason because we'll yeah. have a full guest be- bedroom and bathroom, which will be also. So will be moving in. Yeah. I'm like, actually, <laughs> probably I will be not be able to get them out. Yeah. No, but it'll be, that'll be nice for them to have like their own space. So nice. Yeah. So yeah. Overall though, everything is, has been great lately. On the up and up. On the up and up. I'm excited to potentially get back into like Pilates slowly, but give me, very a, slowly. Give me a sec. Yeah. I'll update you guys when that happens. I'm, I really am very excited to like get back into the swing of things. Yeah. But might need a little more time. We are going to jump into an ad to talk about one of our new sponsors. I'm so excited about this sponsor. It is Dreamland Baby. So one of their most popular products is the Dream Weighted Sleep Sack. Case has been sleeping in this um, sleep sack, the weighted one, from Dreamland Baby for, I think, since he was one, maybe. That's when I discovered it. It is so amazing. He loves it. Even now, we just got a brand new one. Um, Like, it's like the biggest size or whatever. He loves getting into it. It's part of his nighttime routine. He gets into his sleep sack. He feels so comfy and cozy in it. It helps him have just better sleep overall. It's so easy to use. So it's like two-way zippers, which is really nice for changing diapers in the middle of the night if you need to do that. Um, And it's just really, really soft. Like it washes really well. Literally one of my favorite baby products ever. So we do have a code for you guys. You can go to dreamlandbaby.co and enter the code what we said at checkout to receive 20% off site-wide plus free shipping. I understand, um, you know, sleep deprivation now, (laughs) having a newborn and just having a baby and you're like searching for any way for them to sleep longer, sleep better. So I'm super excited about this sponsor and I'm really excited to try them out. I also understand the draw of the two-way zippers. Like now if a swaddle or a onesie doesn't have two-way zipper, I'm like, do not put it on her at night Mm -hmm. because I don't want to be in the middle of the night trying to, you know, unbutton things and whatever else. So I love that that's super convenient. Um, Dreamland Baby was founded when... The founder's son was six months old, still waking up like every one and a half hours and she was completely exhausted. And one night she placed a heavy throw blanket on him and noticed that he immediately calmed down. And so that was her aha moment. She knew he needed a wearable weighted sleep solution. And since then they've come so far, they made a deal on Shark Tank and they're just helping families get more sleep, which is awesome. So you guys can go to dreamlandbabyco.com and enter our code what we said at checkout to receive 20% off site wide and free shipping. This offer is for new and existing customers. For sure. And go into it very slowly too. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I feel like I did. Like I would do stretch classes for yeah. probably two months, would walk just do walks for like two months. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I got some muscle back, I'd be like, okay. I can't, I don't even think I would be able to have done a full-on Pilates class. Like, I, it's like, what's the point of coming? I already get sore walking. Yeah. For, I think my first step is taking longer walks. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll move into the Getting into the some muscle tone back on yes. my body. Yeah. Yes. It's crazy to, like, feel no muscle tone. It's yeah. really wild because I think, I mean, I mentioned this before, but I didn't really work out during my pregnancy. Like, I really thought I was going to be one of those girls, you guys. I really, really did. Like, I was just going to work out five times a week. I was going to be, like, posting my, like pregnancy workouts. Wow. Wow. wow! wow. Like I just, I really fell off the wagon. Like I did not work out really at all. I would say I did Pilates like for us for a few months there. I did it maybe like once every two weeks. Yeah. I went to a few Pilates classes. (laughs) That's not really going to do much. Just to maintain a little. Yeah. Yeah. But now at this point, I like feel parts of my body and I'm like, oh yeah, there's no, there's no muscle left. Like that's how I feel. I know I can get it back, but I'm like, it is kind of wild to just have absolutely like no muscle tone on your body. Like yeah. it feels weird. Especially your legs because you're not walking. So you genuinely have not worked out those muscles in so long. That's why I feel like at the end of pregnancy and then postpartum, it's months of just yeah. like S- literally sitting down, down, being horizontal. So you usually in regular life, you're walking. So you have right. some muscle. Everyone has muscle on their legs from walking mm-hmm. and just doing normal things. When you're not doing anything, you're like, wait. No, I totally, if I'm like, I'm flexing. I can feel my bones. I literally, if I go, I'm flexing. I, I was flexing my leg. I go, feel my leg. I'm flexing. Yeah, no quads. Not an ounce of muscle. It's just completely soft. I'm yeah. like, I don't know how long it's going to take for me to regain that whole situation. Yeah. But it also was wild to see how fast you can like deteriorate and yeah. how 
it, you know, cause I've never felt like, oh, I'm in this, like, I'm in incredible shape. Like I've, yeah, I, I stay active, but I was never like, oh, I'm in such good shape. And now I'm like, well, I was doing something I was doing was doing something. Yeah. It was working because I <laughs> definitely had muscle tone before uh, feeling my body now. Yeah. Like it feels completely different. I know. So clearly what I was doing was, you know, yeah. Working to some extent, like building some sort of oh, for muscle sure. and stamina and like flexibility because yeah. I have none of that now. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's nothing like, again, very grateful for my body and all that it's done. <laughs> but when you look, when I look back at photos of me before I had case, before I was pregnant with case, I'm like, oh my gosh, why wasn't I a literal swimsuit model? Like, why didn't I take <laughs> pictures of myself naked every day? Like, and I, I had body image issues back then. I know, like, that's what is the crazy. problem? No, that is what's absolutely crazy. Like, is, I wear baggy t shirts. Why wasn't I literally nude 24 7? I, oh my gosh. <laughs> body dysmorphia is so real. So real. And I did not think like I really sh- struggled with that. I don't know. I just thought, like, obviously, yeah, I would like Normal. see a photo of myself and be like, eh, I don't like that photo. I'm not going to post that. Like, I don't like the way my body looks in it or something. But I don't know. I just didn't think anything of it. Um, I was looking back at some photos of when I was kind of in the middle of like doing some IVF stuff. And so I felt just like bloated and, um, it was when we were in Florida and I remember certain photos being like, oh, I don't like, I do not want to post that. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) I looked back. I'm like, what was I seeing? Yeah. Like, no, it's actually sad. Now look at it. And I actually think that I look like phenomenal yeah. like I'm like wait I was in such good shape in co- I guess just in comparison to now but I I was genuinely shocked I was like I cannot believe that I genuinely was like oh I can't post that like I I this part of me looks weird like I yeah. look big oh no. my gosh like it actually scared me no I actually I try and remind myself that now because I am constantly thinking that yep like when I was um at the end of my pregnancy with Case, I remember being like, I am a balloon. I'm huge. I'm so, like, I don't even want a picture of my face. And then I would see pictures. I'm like, I literally look fine. Yeah. I look great. And then the same thing, I'd be like, okay, I know I'm pregnant. So I feel like, you know, not myself. It's whatever. But, you know, maybe I look fine and I'll look back on this. But it would be so hard for me to convince myself of that yeah. in the moment. Mm-hmm. And then even looking back, I'm like, the fact that I thought I really had the audacity to be like, oh, I don't look good. No, it's crazy. It's really crazy. I'm, we're probably scaring girls like to get pregnant now. They're like, but it's just, but also it's hard because with all of those things, I always think about that, like both sides where I don't want to scare people, but I also don't want people to feel alone if they yeah. do start, if they do feel like, oh, I'm uncomfortable my body postpartum. It's like, no one told me. Right. You know, definitely. Well, uh, to be fair, like I just said, I feel like I'm so happy and I feel so it's not like I'm, I don't know, like all of that being said, even though I do feel different now and like, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to like work back to maybe what I was like. I, I'm but we not, were also so much younger. That's the thing. Yes. It's like your body's going to change regardless. Like I can love my body now. Like, and I do, even after, um, I had case, I was like postpartum. I really loved my body then. I was like, oh, I feel like it's different, but I think I'm still cute. Like yeah. I actually love my new stomach and like, yeah. you know, I feel like it fits me. Mm -hmm. but it just, I think the most shocking thing is noticing how critical we are of ourselves in the moment. And then looking back and being like, I think about that now. I'm like, I know in a couple of years, you'll look back at this. I'll look back at this time and be like, Chelsea, you looked so good. Why were you like so stressed about it? Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. It's the shock of like mm -hmm. how critical we are of ourselves and how it's so unwarranted. Yeah. I've been trying to remind myself of the same thing. Like, I, I've been trying to be like, you know, when I'm vlogging, like just vlog who cares? and yeah. just who cares if there's a bad angle or, you know, you maybe look a little different or whatever, like just, and don't address it. Like, it's just, that's how you look. Yeah. That's how you look. Yeah. It's fine. It's not a big deal. And like you said, I'll probably look back in two years and be like, why was I great. worried? Like, yeah. What's the problem? It's just, we're our own worst critics and- I mean, to be fair, I think it's like society and social media, like they literally make so many comments about women's bodies that it's yeah. very normal to be critical of yourself. Like mm-hmm. you're, I feel like 
as I've put my life out there, like I am constantly seeing myself from like a different third person's view, which I hate. Like I'm trying so hard to get out of that mindset of like, you know, when I'm, when I am vlogging or something like, oh, I'm going to make this breakfast. And it's like, I'm picturing when I'm looking back at it, what are other people seeing when they see Mm -hmm. this? And it's like, I don't want to be thinking like that. Like who cares? No, 100%. But it's normal. I think to do that, regardless of if you have a platform, it's, it's just normal with social media to be like, oh, how am I being perceived? How do I look right now? And when it's literally the least important thing and no one cares, but I, I, I also think that I've just been thinking about this a lot because obviously I have like, you know, a history of disordered eating and just like body image issues. So Mm -hmm. I feel like every postpartum time, it just is like the ultimate test of like, okay, how much have you really healed? Like, you know, because it's easy, honestly, to be um, confident and like, it's easier to be happy in your body when you are in shape. Like that's just how it is. It just is a little bit easier because you're like, you don't have to overcome what you know society, you know, doesn't like about you. It judges you, you, you for. Know. So when I'm, first of all, used to my body, mm-hmm. which I think helps. I think that's why when you're older, you just like are used to your body. So it's not as shocking mm-hmm. and like, you're just, you know, you grow to love it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think when you're pregnant and postpartum for me, what's so hard is it's just like such a fast change Mm -hmm. that it's like, oh, I just got so used to how I used to look. Now I'm having to look, you know, this other way. And I've been thinking about just like how I want everything to be perfect all the time. Like, okay, I don't want it to look like I had a baby. (laughs) I don't want it to look like, and I think a mindset, this is, I'm speaking personally, it might not work for everybody, but for me, because I tend to want to, control things and like want everything to be picture perfect and I don't want to show anybody anything unless everything like every not even just my physical body but just everything in general is like perfect like and for me I think you mean on social media or just in general both just in general like just I tend to do that sometimes like want everything to be perfect and I think that I've just always not been good with like sacrifice like I don't want to accept that you have to sacrifice some things Mm -hmm. and I also have seen that trend on social media of like you know the girl with the list about pregnancy and like Uh it'll like a girl showing her stretch marks like add this to the list of like reasons yeah reasons not to have babies or whatever Uh and I totally get that it is scary but at the same time I feel like the more I've accepted that in order to have things that I ultimately want, I will have to sacrifice things and then that's okay. And that's the reality of life. Mm-hmm. Like you can, it's kind of like the ballerina farm thing, honestly, we'll, we'll get into that in a second, but it's like, oh, she had to sacrifice ballet for her family. And it's like, okay, let's not even get into that whole <laughs> thing right now. But in a sense, there are, in life to get some things that you ultimately want. Like I wanted to have babies and I wanted to be pregnant, whatever. And there are just going to be some sacrifices mm-hmm. and that's just how mm-hmm. it is. You can't have your cake and eat it too. All exactly. The time. Yeah. Like you can't, and that's just how it is. And that's okay. That's yeah. okay to just accept that. Oh yeah. I had this and like, I, do you know what I'm I trying think to say? In different chapters of life, you have to sacrifice different things. Like, yeah. Like, you know, you can, I guess, have it all in the sense that I think you can have a thriving career and also have kids and be in good shape. Like yeah. I totally believe and be a good can, mom. And yeah, also, I yeah. believe you can do all of those things. Um, but maybe not all simultaneously. And like, there are going to yeah. be chapters where it's just not, I mean, I feel the same way. It's like, okay, how quickly can I look like I didn't have a bit like how yeah. quickly can I go back? And it's like, yeah. literally I, yeah, I feel the same way. I, I mean, I've wanted this for years and years. So, it's okay that it looks like I had a baby because I did a few weeks ago. Like Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, yes, you have to make sacrifices. And I feel like as women, it's just, it's, it's crazy because we have to, if you do want kids and if you, even if you don't honestly with like hormones and people that, you know, have like endometriosis or there's just so many different things, autoimmune issues. It's like that affect maybe the way that your body looks it's hard, especially as women, because that's the thing that is so um, focused on focused on in mm-hmm. our society and like has been for so long. And so it's like, I don't know, just this constant yeah, push and pull. But and, and you can be trying your best at all these things, too. It's like you could be postpartum and like, OK, I want to be healthy. I want to be working out, whatever. And, and that's how I feel. 
and it, like I was saying, the sacrifice part of it is like, I want to be, um, you know, if I want to look exactly how I used to look or not even how I used to look, how I've never looked and probably will never look because, you know, you just see other people or you see, you know, what other people, I guess, like, um, con- not congratulate, but like what other people not worship. Like if applaud. someone does look like they've never had a baby, like, you know, all the comments are going to be you. like, yeah, like, yeah, you don't even look like you had a baby. I can't believe it. Like, you know, yeah. So then you see other people getting congratulated, praise, praise. praised for that. Yeah. yeah. So then you're like, oh, I want the praise. I want that praise. Yeah. Like, I want to look, I want to be a perfect mom. I want to be looking like I never had a baby. I want to be crushing it in my career at the same time. I want to be, you know, doing all of these things and like presenting totally. this way. But I think you have to just accept what happens when you do your best. Yeah. And that might not always be perfect how you how I want it you know yeah definitely or the perception of it yeah you won't always be perfect should we talk about ballerina for a second yes we should oh my gosh I'm literally sweating already talking about it just because it's hot oh okay (laughs) yeah well I mean we're a little late maybe we can just briefly people have been begging us but we again we weren't I you know what I wanted to talk about even more than the ballerina farm thing specifically is just like this overarching concept that I've been becoming very aware of recently and that is edits that are made on TikTok and how much it can truly sway your perception of something to see video clips to music that evoke your emotion. Yeah. It is absolutely insane how easily swayed, easily swayed I can be personally Same. by a TikTok edit. And I know the whole, I'm assuming based on the comments and the things that I see, all of us are being swayed. Like it is so crazy. So I don't want to, I don't want to go through and like explain the whole ballerina farm thing because I feel like everyone knows if you know you know but with that like I literally feel as though that one article that obviously is biased because any article is it's written by someone who it was actually written like writing wise great writing very evoke like evoking emotion it was written like very um artistically the how it ended with like and she put her ballet stuff in the cupboard yeah and that's how it ends it's like so great Great writing, honestly. Yeah. Very biased. And obviously, (laughs) any article is going to be biased. And something in in a publication is written by someone with an agenda, whether that's whatever it is. Like, it's their job is to get clicks. They want clicks. That's what they're doing. Same with reality TV. They want views. They want clicks. They're going to do things, whatever, Um, you know, that evoke emotion. Like, yeah. Everything is not probably as it seems when you're any type of media, but it has been so crazy to watch. Like I was just thinking about this a lot because this is kind of happening simultaneously when Love Island was on and the season kind of blew up. Like the reason it blew up is because of TikTok, I feel like, mm-hmm. and because of social media, because yeah. people were making edits and like, you know, uh, putting Leah's one liners with iconic music and then her it's like these slow-mo clips of her and it does make her look Mm -hmm. like you know it paints her in this certain light yeah and there's a reason that she has millions of followers now and that other love island seasons like it hasn't been like that Mm -hmm. because where were the edits then it's literally because of the tiktok edits that the that it's the most streamed reality show in the u.s right now and that people feel a certain way about people and And another thing that I was thinking is like, there were all these edits of Leah and Rob who were two people on the show that were together at the beginning, but they didn't end up together and they didn't like want to be together at the end. And they've both individually said like, people are like worshiping something that doesn't exist. It's literally just TikTok edits of clips. One thing I said to her, yeah. And it was crazy to hear Leah saying like, he did not even... Like, she's, like, looking back, like, basically, he didn't even treat me well. And, like, he made me feel, like, crap. And I was miserable. But then everyone was, like, worshiping this relationship because of TikTok edits. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same with the ballerina farm thing. Mm -hmm. Like, when you just look at the TikTok edits and the article, you can be so easily swayed that, like, she's a victim to her circumstance. And she had to give up all her dreams. But then you, you hear other things or you see her own content. And it's, like, the complete opposite. Yeah. People just get so, like, worked up things like that because of the edits of the music and oh my gosh they make 
wild claims too like so sensationalized so exactly like she is being oppressed like he's an abuser which is like such a crazy thing to say about someone that based you don't know one article based on article that you don't know and, and based off edits. Tic- and tiktok cli- or clips that she first of all posted herself on her own right thing to show her lifestyle a documentary person is not filming her like being forced to milk her cow like <laughs> oh, let's be for real yeah and they're like putting that to music it's like I just can't. I can't it's, with the edits of it. That is like you're really, twelve. You got to be twelve to make those edits. Yeah, but me falling for it. I'm like, someone take a beautiful girl <laughs> and hide her away. Those were killing yeah. me. It. I don't know. I don't even know. Her what doing to say ballet about in it. the field, like she never gets to do ballet yeah, the, again. Pe- literally, the top comment, like it's like a, watching a caged animal. I'm like, you guys. He named her about. Ba- he named it ballerina far, so she had to look at her dreams that he took away from her. You guys, we gotta be they love, far. Like, that's why they just love, like they want to make it this A big, story. They would like quote it like, who's they? Was, just people on TikTok? You know, they, the the people that are just like, the 12 year olds. Yeah, yeah, that are making the comments. Yeah, that are stuff, making yeah. the comments that are like so worked up about it. Like, the thing is, the thing is, if all of that is true, then that would be really sad. Like if yeah. it is true that he, of course. of course, duh. Like if he really, you know, kind of coerced her into marrying him yeah. and if he really did kind of not let her dance anymore and like dulled her shine, dulled her shine like and made her become this trad wife and she didn't want to do that. And yeah. like, if he was abusive, like, of course that's terrible. And then that would be worth being like upset over. Yeah. But we don't know that no. you don't know either way if that's true and if it's not true that is so dangerous to make that assumption and so not even dangerous but like horrible for their mental health like imagine I'm just imagining like a reporter comes to my house and I can't even think of why they would be there um come and do she an wants article to know about like the renovations on your house the whole process yeah and you're so excited to show her. You bring her along. You show her yes. Benny. You show her Leif. And then she talks she to them. She flips it as Leif is, a, I'm a victim and Leif is a, whatever, an oppressor. And Abuser. like my child is whatever. I And I had to give up all my dreams. And now I have this kid. Like I'd be like, what? I would be so upset. Violated. Yes. I would yeah. feel so violated. It's like you were in my space. You were in my home. And you had an agenda that I didn't know about and you twisted my words and you twisted my husband's words. And now the entire public thinks that we have a dynamic that we literally don't have. Yeah. And like, that is so dangerous. So that I feel like is the scary part of like the media and people just jumping on immediately and like believing everything they see. Again, if it's true, then I would feel so bad for her. But I, I don't, I, we can't know that from one article written by one person. Yeah. Yeah. And a few TikTok edits. No. And, and the other thing is, is when somebody tells their own story, it's like, okay, yeah, let's believe them. Let's hear them out. Right. She's quite literally telling us the, the opposite. opposite. Like she has never said herself that in the article, she never even really said anything about that. Like, and I think they, the parts that were just taken of, I showed Nick the article and I was like asking him about it. I was like, what, what do you think about this? And um, he, he was like, well, it's a very well-written article. Like, She's a great writer. And I was like, well, people are thinking that he is, you know, this terrible guy and he's uh, and trapped her and she's an animal in this farm and she, an she dances for him. Like the animals she, aren't the only ones trapped, but she has to be Please. like, she has to put her ballet stuff in the cupboard and, and she had to turn her ballet studio into like the homeschool room or whatever. Yeah. And she, he was like, wait, why do they think that he's like, he in the article, it says that, he does all the laundry and that she can't get out of bed because she's so exhausted for a week. He's like, okay, so then if they don't have a nanny who's taking care of the kids and running the household for the week when she's in bed and taking care of her, the husband. Right. So like, uh, it doesn't, he's like, I didn't even get that from the article that he's like some whatever, like, terrible. Yeah. Doing the laundry for 10 people is- That's a full-time job in He's not just like locking her in the house. You do everything. You don't have a nanny. You don't, whatever. I do think they should get a nanny. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> That's insane. That's the only thing I, I think about it. But that again, is really crazy. But if she doesn't want it. Well, we can't know from one article yeah. that wasn't even that detailed and long. Yeah. We can't. It's like, these are just all assumptions. Even us right now, these are assumptions we have. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's just, 
I feel like, and then she made a video that was like, did you see her kind of like response being yeah. like, and she wrote a whole thing about she it. She wrote a That's thing. That's the thing. It's like, she's telling us that. She's telling us that he's a great guy. She's telling us that right. it was up to her to give up these things. And she didn't even give up really. She graduated from Juilliard and she was like so proud of that, that she did it while she was pregnant and like just making her empowering story of what she feels empowered by. Right. Taking that away from her, being like, you know, that wasn't your choice. Right. Like you're just a victim. She's yeah. like, cool. I've had all these accomplishments. Yeah. And I've like, tried so hard to like be this, to build this life. Yeah. And then everyone just takes it away. Yeah. I, I find it. I don't know. I, I feel like it's just not enough information to know for sure either way. And I think there's a lot to be said for like the whole trad wife thing. And I don't know, whatever. There's too much to even, to even yeah. dive into with <laughs> yeah. all of that. But uh, yeah, I feel like she appears to love her life and everything she's said. Also, they've gone on a lot of adventures like they lived abroad for a yeah. few years I think it was and like that's where they fell in love with like gardening and they want to it's like well, why are we yeah. making it seem like he immediately trapped her and made her move to the farm within a month it's yeah like, this was like a kind of a like an ongoing process and yeah. she also grew up like with her parents having a flower shop and like having their own business and so she wanted to have kind of like a similar business run from her I don't know yeah. I'm just like it's it's a lot of information to or it's not a lot of information to go off of to yeah. make this absolutely wild assumption and then spread Run it like with wildfire. It. Yeah. Like crazy, crazy accusations. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, they're not just saying, oh, I don't like him. It's like, that's one. Yeah, sure. You can think that about anybody. Like, oh yeah, I learned a little bit about this person. I don't like him, whatever. Yeah. But to literally call them like crazy names, spread that is just really crazy. I love a good protein shake, a protein smoothie, and our favorite protein powder here at the What We Said podcast. And just, you know, in our families and friends' lives is Clean Simple Eats. I personally love that Clean Simple Eats is not chalky. I feel like it's just very creamy and I love all the flavors that they have. Pretty much I've never had a flavor I didn't like. Uh, probably my most used ones are the chocolate brownie batter. So good. Um, you could do like a chocolate almond butter or peanut butter moment or... I love putting like frozen cherries with the chocolate one. It's so good. And like almond milk and stuff. Also, I love their coconut cream flavor and their simple vanilla. All of them are so good though. They have like a mint chocolate cookie. They have tons and they're all delicious. We love clean, simple eats because they are just that clean and simple. Their protein powder is always grass fed with no seed oils or artificial ingredients, third party tested, non-GMO and gluten free. We all know how important protein is in our diet and Clean Simple Eats is the most delicious and best way to do that, to get it into your diet. So each serving has 20 grams of protein, making it the perfect addition to make sure you are getting enough protein in. The other day I woke up and I had the craving for orange juice. So I made one of the orange Julius things with a simple vanilla orange juice. I put a banana in it and I think ice. almond milk and ice. Yeah. And it was so freaking good. Delicious. It really hit the spot. So visit cleansimpleeats.com and use the code what we said 10 at checkout for 10% off your order. That's cleansimpleeats.com code what we said for 10% off your order. Go check it out. It'll be linked in the show notes. I also think it's something to say about how it's always, not always, oftentimes women influencers or like very successful women who are always questioned and it's like there's got to be more to the success like you can't just be doing it all you can't just be like actually successful actually you know doing all like these amazing things like there's got to be something more to it I know there's something up with it like you can't be like they so as true. soon as a woman is like super successful and seems like they're killing it people like just can't possibly believe it do that yeah people yeah. can't believe it and they don't want to believe it and they don't um they don't like it versus yeah. some people don't like it and some people just don't believe it. They're like, no. It's like, okay, I know so many business owners of million dollar businesses who are dads, who are husbands. No one's like, well, there's gotta be more. How is he really yeah. doing this? His wife makes him do it. It's yeah. like, no one thinks that. I know. It's so annoying. That's so true. People think the same about Nara Smith. It's always like, she. Ha I know she has a nanny, like, which... Also, like, who cares if she does? <laughs> yeah. Who cares if she does or doesn't? And why is that, like, why do we have to, like, get her? Like, yeah. 
you have to you tell ha- us. You must have a nanny. Like you can't yeah. be portraying this life and like, why? Yeah. Why? Social media is, okay. I just saw this video. This is, I'm like making this connection. <laughs> I saw this video of um, this guy, Brett, you know him on TikTok. Mm-hmm. He was like, talking about how when you put in a password and it's like, your password is like not strong enough. And he's like, okay, well that's good because it's my password. He's like, (laughs) so I actually don't care if my password's strong. He's like, you heard that it said your, he's like, so you can do whatever you want for your password. I'm going to use the password I've made since I was eight years old and like (laughs) continue to do that. He's like, I actually want it to be weak and I don't care if I get hacked, like that's on me. And I was just thinking about like, okay, that's her social media account. Yeah. Did you hear when I said hers? Yeah. She can do whatever she wants. Her life. Why does she have to explain? Why does she have to explain to you if if she does or does not have a nanny? Yeah. Why is that relevant? No. Why can't we all like... She can't be working and not have a nanny. Like, how is she doing that? I love the fantasy of it. Yeah. I love that she's in a freaking... A feathery dress making homemade gum. Yeah. I don't care whether it's real, fake. She has a nanny. She doesn't have a nanny. Yeah. What is it to me? Like, yeah, I don't get that. I don't get the like, there has, you have to tell us like, even with Ballerina Farm, it's like, do you have a nanny? Well, you need to be honest about it. Why? She's literally just posting fun videos of her making sourdough bread. Like, why, why do we care what exactly behind the scenes is happening? Yeah. It's not her job to make you comfortable. No, it's your job to deal with like, uh, if you leave it up to other people to base your happiness on, like I was saying previously, it's like, if I'm comparing myself to other people postpartum, that's my problem. Like, that's not their you problem. You would never go to them and say, you shouldn't You post- shouldn't have posted that you look that good yeah. three, three weeks postpartum because I'm not there yet. Like, that's my problem. Like, it's my problem to not compare and to realize everybody's different. Everybody has different circumstances. Totally. And to work it out on my own. That's my own problem. Like, also, I think with the ballerina farm thing, people for so long were like, she's not disclosing that she has a nanny. She's not disclosing that. And then in the article, he doesn't want her to have, she deserves a nanny. She, (laughs) which one? Yeah. Like first, that's what I was saying. If I had eight children, I would be having yeah, four nannies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there would be multiple nannies. That, at that woman point. needs a nanny, but yeah. she doesn't want one. It's like it, who cares? And maybe she does have one, and she's not telling us. <laughs> not our life. Not our life. But and that's so personal. I think that's like where the lines. What's are your blurred. child care? How yeah. many hours a week are you getting yeah. child care? Because I want to know how much you can actually do with child. It's like you got watch her milk her cow yeah. and plunge get cold plunge in her river. Yeah, make sourdough bread and live her happy life with her children why do we care the ins and outs like i feel like people pretend that it that they care about like her mental health or something Mm -hmm. like maybe some do but you know what i mean it's like well she deserves more it's like oh for sure absolutely she deserves like to be happy and stuff but i feel like just the nitpicking and the job i'm kind of going on more of a broader range at this point not even just talking about the ballerina farm stuff i just see that constantly with like every like literally every successful woman like you said that i see It's always, if they have kids, it's like, well, do you have a nanny? Like you need to really be honest about that. And it's like, literally, why is that any of your business? Mm -hmm. What people, how people take care of their children. Social media is a fantasy world. We're all just like, like follow people you relate to or that you like. And that's it. Like if you do not like it, block them and do not follow them. If you want their responsibility. If you want real life, make real life friends. Like, yes, if you want real people meet people face to face go back to the real world like go back to the real world talk to your real friends talk to real people in your life talk to your professor I don't know know. like talk to other people in real life don't go to social media for things that you should be getting from your own real life like I talk to my friends like what do you guys do about nannies like how do you right like postpartum like how do you feel postpartum you know I feel more connected to the people in my real life about those things. That's actually where I get a lot of my relatability, where I get a lot of my like advice, advice, motivation, like social media. You got to, I understand it's easy to be swept up in it because I was going to say people just are so easily, easily manipulated by those things. Yes. Well, it's like the edit thing. That's why, that's where this whole thing started is like, obviously again, always think twice. You, you (laughs) like, 
on one hand, people could hear that conversation and be like, wow, you're kind of biting the hand that feeds you because it's like, well, you're an influencer. Like, you know, if people don't yeah, care about I'm our in, podcast. We're entertainment. That's right. what it is. But if people don't care about our podcast, then we have no job. If people don't follow along with your life, then you don't have a job 100%. I feel like that's different though than people demanding like very personal details. Yeah. Like I, I that's where you lose me. I don't get yeah. that. I don't understand having to know the ins and outs of someone's personal, like very- very personal details. Think about that. Someone actually just posted. Oh my gosh. Did you see the birthday party thing? Yeah. You saw that drama? Uh, the girl who posted about the birthday party? Yes. Yeah. This girl basically, oh my gosh, I'm going to go crazy because that was crazy. Yeah. She basically, a big influencer had a birthday party and invited like 200, 300 people. Maybe it was more. I'm not sure all the details. And, um, it was in LA, I think. And a plus one, like a girl, a friend of a friend basically like came to the party and was like, made this whole TikTok about how it wasn't fun and how they didn't pay, like they didn't pay for like Ubers for them to get there and how like she posted a video of it just being kind of like a lame party. I'm putting quote air quotes over it. And she was like, I just didn't have fun. Like, honestly, it was so disappointing and blah, blah, blah. And luckily I feel like everyone was like, you're weird for that. Yeah. Like, why is it who cares if you didn't have fun it was not your birthday yeah like and you weren't even invited and you weren't even invited so why are you doing like like literally raiding the birthday party like here's my thoughts on this birthday party like yeah. I didn't really like it it's like cool why are you making a whole video about it it's also like very mean to yeah be like, it's just mean this was a lame party it's like cool I literally and the girl replied she's like I literally just wanted to have a birthday party and you're so rude <laughs> um but this girl stitched it and was like we have gotten way too comfortable like basically exactly that going to social media and saying very rude things and talking about things publicly that you should be talking about with your friends yeah why are you going on tiktok to make a video of such a mean heart like just a rude video yeah tell your friend that you didn't have fun yeah why are you posting about it and she was like and then the girl was like, I'm getting bullied. Like, um, for I'm getting canceled for not having fun. Like, her fans are coming to me and being rude to me. It's like, you messed around and found <laughs> out, girl. You're rude. Yeah. You're there rude. There are consequences to your actions. Yeah. Sorry that you're getting bullied. You bullied her publicly, too. You're rude. Yeah. Stop saying things on social media that y you should honestly just keep to yourself yeah. or tell your freaking friend. I'm getting fired up. I'm so mad. I feel like the the motto of the or the the moral of this episode is the consequences exist. Yes. It's the same thing with having a baby. The consequence sometimes is that your body changes and that's just life. Like there's just consequences and just accept it. If you freedom of speech, we have freedom of speech in this country. Doesn't mean there's not consequences. People are like, well, I can say whatever I want. Freedom of speech. Yeah, you can say whatever you want and you're not you're not going to get arrested yes. by the government. But people can but come and tell you I you're rude. Like, you're rude or yeah. that was stupid or I don't think that I don't agree with that. That doesn't just be like they want to have like I, freedom of speech. I could say whatever I want on social media. Okay, you can. But guess what? There are consequences to your actions. There's always going to be natural consequences to your mm. actions. And that's just that's life. You got to learn to just live with the consequences of your actions. No, I, I, I feel like we have as a collective society just gotten way too comfortable being like too reliant on social media for certain things and very entitled to like other people's yeah. just everything. Like again, like demanding to know like, well, there must be more. We need to dig into like so-and-so's past and see like, da -da -da. and it's just like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Like, what is your goal to with all of this? Yeah. And again, like I'm a, uh, not a victim, but <laughs> I get, uh, swept up in it too. And yeah. I feel like I will literally see a TikTok edit and be like, wow. And then I like have to check myself and be like, mm -hmm. whoa. It's literally just a video with music to it that yeah. like made me feel fired up about a specific yeah. thing. And that, and that can be used in a beautiful way too, obviously. Like, yeah. you know, I'll see like Olympian like videos with music to it. And I'm literally like sobbing, being like, I'm so inspired. Like there's a positive spin to that. But mm -hmm. I feel like when it just gets into the nitty gritty of like, I don't know. Just yeah, and I think it all can be like fine because that's the purpose of social media. I think I was saying this on the episode with Tyson. It's like we're influencers, we're content creators, we're creating content for you to 
enjoy. Mm -hmm. And part of that is like reality TV. It's like part of you wants to psychoanalyze it. You want to talk about it. But I think there's just an awareness of don't let it get swept up into real life. Like you have to have some kind of literacy with like watching certain things and knowing like reality TV, even Love Island. Like I can talk about it and analyze the show and them on the show and what they're doing. But I know for a fact, if I met them in person, I would not be like, you did this. Like, you know, it's just like, yeah, it's, it's for entertainment and you Mm -hmm. use it as entertainment. And and don't get so swept up. Don't get so swept up in it. Let it affect your real life. Yeah. Where the same thing is like taking it so far with certain things of like getting absolutely in the black hole of it where it's like, okay, let's understand that this is what it is. Yeah. We're not getting the full picture and we can enjoy it. We can Mm -hmm. enjoy that, but we don't have to be like taking it and making it so personal to us as well. Mm -hmm. Getting so wrapped up. Yeah. It's easy to do. Truly. It is. Oh, so I just feel like I seriously, the TikTok edits have like gone to another level. Yeah. Like we, they have gone to another dimension where it's just like, (laughs) wow. And I was even thinking with like the rise and fall and rise and fall again of like Gypsy Blanchard, Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Like even that, it was like, she was getting out of prison and it was just like, work, like we're obsessed with her. And then a huge rise to a huge fall again, massive fall. And then now kind of like rising again and then falling again so fast. It's like, the time, the cycle is getting quicker and quicker. So quick. And it honestly terrifies me. It like, oh my gosh, it's just like, <laughs> it's, you know, you can take absolutely no stake in what anyone thinks about you. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, say something of on our podcast goes viral for a good reason. And yeah. people are like, oh my gosh, like, this is awesome. This is so, I love this clip or something. And we're like, this is yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, guess what? Next week, it's yeah. going to be another clip taken out of context or- whatever it is or not (laughs) or just us being idiots and it's going to be these girls are whatever it is Mm -hmm. like you know and that's why you cannot take any stake in like yeah what people's perception of you is what the internet is saying there's literally true yeah you can't good or bad get wrapped up in like oh my gosh everyone's loving me right now because the second literally i promise you in two weeks it's gonna be they all hate you for some reason. Yeah, exactly. And then the next week, it's going to be fine again. And it's just no crazy. no one's going to remember. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's so crazy. The cycle is crazy. Speaking of social media, this is way off topic. How Do you know who um, Supa Soakers are on TikTok? Super so- no. Supa Soakers. You're about, your life's about to change. What you is never, it? Okay. Let me show you a clip and just, I feel like you might have seen them. Oh, Maybe I just don't know the name. Not the Olympics. Me watching an Olympics edit, though. It's like, Simone Biles. No, literally. Me so wrapped up in everything I see. <laughs> it's in the right You're way. so very special. What is happening? But I'm a creep. I'm a widow. Are they literally at Walmart? Goodwill. I don't belong here. <laughs> okay this is just one they literally i feel like people listening will know who they are um i think they're blowing up i think but they do things like that at goodwill that's like their whole page they will do they'll find like an outfit from goodwill and then do a song a dance like a little yeah character. like they do like michael jackson or like the bgs because they'll find like 70s clothes or like oh and they're actually so talented like the one guy's such a good dancer and the other guy's such a good singer and like they're I don't know if they're theater kids or not, but they bring so much joy to my life. You guys need to follow them. Supra, Supa dot soakers. It's <laughs> so name. funny. Oh my gosh. I love so that. Funny. Yeah. I love, um, on one hand now to take it into a different, I love like how unserious, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Just things like that can be where it's like, this is just straight up like entertaining and funny. Yeah. Um, let's not ruin it and try and psychoanalyze let's that. Let's not like, try and find how they're a bad per like <laughs> don't ruin super soakers for me, okay? Because I'm sure they're not perfect. Yeah. But don't don't dig into their past. <laughs> Just let me enjoy it. It's like for goodness sakes. I know. It's it's a lot. Did I've you- I've had that on my mind a lot. Okay, this is my last note. Okay. Did you Thanks. know that they changed the alphabet? I'm sorry, did you just say alphabet? Alphabet. Okay. Alphabet. Um, did I say alphabet? I think you said alpha. It sounded like alphabet. The ABCs. From, what do you mean? 
They changed how you sing it. Like they changed the song. And it's actually like so much better, but really can I, crazy. Can we get a yeah. I'm, sample? I'm trying to like make sure I sing it. Are AB, the ABCs and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star literally the same? Yeah. And not Ba Ba Black Sheep. Yeah. Ba Ba Black Sheep, have you any more? That's okay. Okay, this is the new one. <clears throat> okay, wait, let me make sure. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And then I think it goes like, I can't remember. The, the end is different too. It's not like now you know my, or whatever. Are you pranking me? No, I'm serious. They changed it. But it's actually better for kids because the LMNOP doesn't like LMNOP. Because I think kids get confused. They think LMNOP is one thing. And they took out the and before Z. So it's like X, Y, Z instead of Y and Z. Because kids are like, wait, is and a letter or? Okay, use context clues, kids. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Be smart. Yeah, come on. Um, Wow. Isn't that crazy? I was shook. I'm kind of sad about that. I kind of liked LMNOP. I know the end of an era. So it's like L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Then mm-hmm. it's like I can't remember. So the I'm, end g- I'm giving too. boomer energy right now, being like <laughs> they change. Why everything. do they change this? They don't need to change it. Okay, it's I can maybe better. hop on board. I was gonna say like, eh, what am I gonna need to soon. know about the ABCs? <laughs> uh, maybe Very soon. soon. Maybe yeah. I I might have to be singing that to her soon. So yeah. I, maybe I got to hop on board. How did you find out this information? I saw a TikTok. <laughs> and it taught me everything I needed to know. And I believed it instantly. <laughs> <laughs> After this whole conversation. No, I talked to my mom about it too. Mm. But it's just different now. And she said, yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, I think they just, teachers just. Decided it would be better. Switched it up. Maybe I mean, it's not nationwide. They like officially changed it but <laughs> it's on the news. but that's how they teach it now to kids i mean yeah we gotta evolve i guess i can't be we can't be stuck in our ways we gotta yeah. be open to change yeah. and adaptable so all right i guess i'll do it i guess i'll the change abc's has been oppressed <laughs> new conspiracy makes an edit new conspiracy like of <laughs> missing like the heartbreak over the old abc literally i miss lmnop <laughs> And that's not too far fetched. No, honestly, I would I would buy into that. Same, same. That's what I find some of my favorite like um, one of my favorite football players. An edit started it out. That's like how you became. Yeah, it's like yeah, no, one hundred percent. Like edit of him doing cool stuff. I'm like, he's the best. I'm we, drafting him for my you, fantasy football. We haven't made it yet because people haven't made edits of us. I know. Like of us saying like. Okay, guys, find a clip from our <laughs> six-year friend when something very sweet and then make it like a edit of us, like being friends. I wonder if Come we on. have enough content for them, like videos. Uh, we, oh, videos. We've got videos f- since we were literally 15 on the internet. Go find them. Well, not don't look too close. <laughs> we're next. <laughs> Dig. <laughs> Dig as deep as you can. No, um, we, our, we do not have that many like, well, We'd probably do. You know what I'm just saying? Like that live forever, like on a feed or something like videos that someone could go reference. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe we do. Like TikToks of us. We, we honestly, we we need to get 2020. We need to get to work because I was thinking, I'm like, we don't have like, if you looked at our (laughs) individual TikToks, like no one would know we're even friends. No one would know I'm even alive. (laughs) (laughs) Like we need to make TikToks together. Yeah, we do. You know, we need to go back to the good old days. No, now that neither of us are pregnant anymore, you bitches better watch out. <laughs> You've had your time. We're about to cook. It is over for everyone. It's over for you guys. And as soon as I'm done breastfeeding, I can get Botox again. Wait. It's really, you can go get it. I know. I was going to say, I was going to text you the other day and be like, wait, let's go get Botox together. And then I remembered. Just to rub it in. <laughs> I'm like, and then I remembered, I'm free and you're not. <laughs> Can't you pump and dump for a sec? I think it's just like, it's living. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna endanger you and your child, but I was thinking about Botox recently because I remembered the glow it gives you pretty immediately. Like it's just, your makeup goes on so smooth. And I was like, wow, I miss that. I want that. Yeah. So 
my scalp lines are getting real I deep. I might have to do one session without you and then we That's can That's fine. It's like my together. reward because when I'm done breastfeeding, like after a full year, I'm like kind of sad about it. But the thing that gets me through, I'm like, oh, I got my face back. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. That is a reward. Yeah. And I get a free boob reduction right after. So Slay. it's fun. Well, thanks for listening, guys, um, to our chatty episode. I didn't know things were going to get so heated. I didn't know we were going to give so, so many hot. opinions. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I didn't mean literally. I'm but, both. Okay. I heated in both Same. ways. I have sweat stains. Um, love you guys so much. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to see us um, talking. If you, if not, you can always subscribe on Spotify or Apple Podcast app to get notified when we have new episodes. And you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, what we said podcast on Insta and what we said on TikTok. Love you guys so much. And that's, that's what, what we, we said. said. Bye. Bye.